So God, um, so grateful for your faithfulness. So grateful that as we even said last week, you are already in our future. It's not just that you know the future, you're already there. And you'll meet us when we arrive. And maybe somebody came in here today not knowing how things are going to turn out. Maybe people are just holding on to faith today. Would you strengthen that today, God? Would, would this service, this day, remind them that where you guide, you provide. You always come through. We can always trust you. If you're open to hearing from God today, I invite you to pray this simple prayer that we pray every week together as a church. If you're new, just a quiet prayer between you and God, something like this. Jesus, would you please speak to me today because I am listening. And then would you pray for somebody else? Maybe you're somebody you're seated beside, you came to church with today, friend or a family member, maybe somebody you just met this morning. A simple prayer for them, very sincere, something like this. God, please talk to this person today and, and give them the, the hope and the faith and the courage to follow you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Uh, when you came in today, you got a bulletin, and inside that bulletin is a little note-taking outline. You can write down some things, fill in some blanks, circle some Bible verses. I always think it's really important to engage when you come to church and lean in and listen, and have the posture of a learner. I really want you to take notes. If you don't, I'm going to pray you get a horrible stomach virus this week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Hey, let's start out with this verse. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I just I always come back to this series of verses here. I think it's so incredibly important. Uh, it's just a big press from Moses writing to the people of God to say, we, we should not forget. He says, when God, your God, ushers you into the land he promised through your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you. You're going to walk into some large, bustling cities you didn't build, well-furnished houses you didn't buy, come upon wells you didn't dig, vineyards and olive orchards you didn't plant. In other words, you're going to, you're going to walk into a land that I've promised, and there's going to be some things there that you had nothing to do with that God just comes through, that God gifts you with. You've stepped out on faith, and then there's going to be a measurable blessing on top of that. But here's where i like for us to concentrate today. He says, when, when, you, when you take it all in, when you settle down, pleased and content, listen, come on, make sure you don't forget how you got there. God brought you out of slavery, slavery in Egypt. I love that line. Make sure you don't forget how you got there. When we lose our why, when we lose that heartbeat behind why we do what we do, we lose our way. And over and over again in the scriptures, God calls us back to remember, to celebrate, to refocus. Why? Because we're forgetful people. We drift. We move along in different paths and we just get busy. And God says, don't forget the things that really matter. When I'm out in the community, uh, and whether that's working out or at the grocery store getting my hair cut, uh, I'll bump into people, and inevitably the question always comes up, hey, what do you do? What do you do for a living? Right? That's just kind of the normal conversation. I try to avoid answering that because then it ends up going into a big, long, crazy discussion because uh, people have like a lot of preconceived notions about pastors. So I always do this little trick where they're cutting my hair or something, and they say, hey, what do you do? I say, listen, don't judge me. Don't judge me. And then they think I'm a drug dealer or something. So it kind of brings it back down to say, I'm a pastor. Because I think they think I'm going to judge them if I say I'm a pastor. And, and ultimately, here, here's where it goes from there. Okay, uh, well, what kind of church are you? Right? And what they mean by that is, uh, hey, are you Lutheran? Or are you Episcopalian, Baptist, Catholic? I mean, your last name's Priest, so maybe you're Catholic. Every single time somebody asks me and I'm signing, saying, oh, your last name's Priest and you're a pastor. It must have been destiny, right? Like, yeah, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Thank you. They'll say, uh, you know, what kind of denomination, but what kind of church? Really what they're asking is, hey, what's your church about? I mean, what really matters to you guys? What kind of church are you? What kind of things are you involved in? What really matters at your church? And that's what I'd love for us to talk about today. I'd love for us to, to be reminded of the things that really make Journey Journey and really are the heartbeat of God, are, are what 
I really think every church ought to be about, but just remind us, recenter us on some things. So that when you're out in the community and somebody asks you about your church, and they say, what kind of church is that? That you'll be able to say, this, this is the kind of church. This is what we're really all about. So write some things down with me today. The first thing is that we really, really believe in life-giving Christianity. Every single time people walk into this building, every single time people bump into people at Journey or in a small group or a youth group environment and a kids ministry environment out in the community, here's what I want them to think. Then those people are a breath of fresh air. Every time I go there, I'm encouraged. I'm challenged. I feel like I have been in the presence of God. Uh, I know that many of you might have grown up in religious traditions and you went to church maybe as a family and you didn't want to go. You had a drug problem. Your mama drug you to church, right? You just got there. You're like, I don't want to be here, right? And, I, and, and you left. And you're like, hey, I'm glad it, it was over. I want people leaving every week going, it's done already? Like, I want it to be a breath of fresh air. I'm so in, excited to go every single week. Look at this verse out of John 10.10. 10. This is Jesus speaking. He says, listen, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Like that, that's my heartbeat for my family, for my wife, for my kids. That's my heartbeat for every one of you, that you would experience the life that only Jesus can give. And he says, I want to give it not just a little bit. I want to give it to the full. That word means overflowing to abundance. And that's what God wants to give us. And I think every time we come around our church, it should be about that. Uh, here's another big idea for us underneath that is that Jesus is our lead story. Everything about, everything about journey is leading people to Jesus. I just believe in, in my bones that if we can get all of the obstacles out of the way and people can actually see Jesus for who he really is, that people can't help but love and follow him. I think when we read the stories of people laying down their lives, men leaving everything behind to follow him, it was because they got the right glimpse of who he was. Sometimes church gets in the way of that, right? Right? Sometimes people can't see Jesus for all the religious people in front of him. And if we could just part the waters, if we could just remove the obstacles for people to see Jesus, I think it would be so incredibly, incredibly effective and important. Our first message series here at Journey when I first became the pastor here was we walked through the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, for about a year, just talking about Jesus and how do we follow Jesus Together, we burned all of those tapes, by the way, because they were awful, uh, unbelievably bad. Uh, I said things that were inappropriate, had asked for forgiveness almost every week about, man, I'm so sorry I said that last week. I really didn't mean it that way. And so, aren't you glad I've grown? Aren't you glad I'm like better Christian now? So not, that was supposed to be funny. You don't know me that well yet. So here's another big idea underneath that heading is that I really, really want you to know God and not just know about God. You might have grown up in a religious culture where the highest ideal was to gather more information. To gather more biblical information or more spiritual information. And the person with the most information won. But really, a, a lot more information doesn't radically change our lives. If that was true, when Google came on board, then we'd all be brilliant. None of us would have any problems. What, what changes our life is relationship. And significantly, a relationship with God. We come to know the truth through a relationship with God. Listen, you can know a lot about someone and not know them. I love sports. I'm a, a massive football fan. Um, I know things about grown men that I should not know. I know how much certain men weigh and how, how fast they can run certain distances. Does anybody else, any other guys? And you're like, I can know all of that about them and not know them. And you can come to church your whole life and know a lot about God and not know him. What a sad, what a sad shame. That, that is not the heart of journey. Like we want you to know God because that's the only thing that really changes us. Here at Journey also, life-giving Christianity, it's, it's get to, not have to. Many times we end up serving God out of duty rather than delight. But we want to flip that switch and we just want to say with all of our hearts, like it's get to, not have to. You mean Jesus set me free? 
You mean he rescued me from darkness and sin and hell and saved me and set me on a new path and gave me a family and, and a purpose in life? And oh yeah, and I get heaven when I die? Oh, it's not have to, it's get to. Oh, you have to go to church today? No, no, I get to go to church today. Oh, you have to serve up there. You, you, gotta, you, you have to serve this week. No, 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 I get to. You don't understand. Like Jesus has changed my life. I get to do this every single week. Every single week, I sit right over here and we're singing our songs. And right before we come up onto the stage, right before I come up to talk, I have this vision in my mind of being a 16-year-old kid, lost and broken and full of shame and all kinds of insecurities. And Jesus finding me in this fellowship hall of this teeny Baptist church in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, and said, I want you. I've got something for you. And so every time I come up here, it's always get to, never have to. So when you roll into journey, life-giving Christianity, I, I really hope that you come going, I can't wait to get, to, I get to do this. I get to serve. I get to park cars. Man, this week I'm sitting out here. I got a little office back behind this wall. It's actually a closet with a window, sort of to keep the pastor during the week. And so I'm looking out there. And I, I, I can't remember, Mark, were you, I think you and I were meeting, and our buddy Lauren, who is on our host team here, you wouldn't know him. He's a very quiet man. He actually built the donut wall. Praise God for Lauren. He built the donut wall. And I look out. He's got a wheelbarrow. He's full of rocks, and he's moving them from one side of the property to the other because there's been a washout out of the entrance. And he is just coming along and just dumping out rocks on his day on Thursday morning. He's got his son with him because it's spring break. Praise God for teenagers who don't have anything to do. Hey, grab a rock, son. We're working for Jesus. So that's a good thing. Nobody knows that. But listen, he wasn't up here because he had to. Nobody paid him. He, he wasn't like, getting extra points in heaven. It, it was like, I get to. I get to do this. Hey, oh my goodness, do you have to serve in children? No, I get to. I hold babies so that parents can experience the love of God. I wipe butts for Jesus every Sunday. Yes. Should probably not include that in the message going forward. Let's cut that out. So it leads to this big idea that, hey, we are a real church for real people. That we just, life-giving Christianity says, we want you to come in here just as you are. We want you to be part of our family just like that. That God always reaches to us exactly the way that we are. God, listen, God doesn't love a future version of you. God doesn't love you when you get it all cleaned up. God doesn't love you when everything comes together for you down the road. He can't love you any more than he already does. And we welcome you just like that. Come into this place. Be real. You can't change what you're not honest about. Only when we drag things out of secret and into the light and say, hey, we're all broken. Every one of us. Every one of us has problems. Every one of us has challenges. And you won't be around here two or three weeks before you hear everybody on this stage saying, here's what I'm going through. Here's what's because we all are. If you're perfect, please don't join this church. You will mess everything up. You will ruin this place. But then that leads us to the next big idea is that don't stop now. Keep moving. Keep growing. Don't get stuck where you are. God has more for you. Look at this verse in Mark 10, 52. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. In other words, you had a starting point, a miraculous moment. It's a blind man who's received his sight. Immediately he received his sight and, come on, and follow Jesus along the road. Don't stop now. Keep moving, keep growing, keep taking your steps with God and see where that leads you. You will be unbelievably surprised how far you're going to travel spiritually just by taking one small step at a time. I can't tell you how many men I run into out in the foyer who will say to me, hey, I've been coming for a while now. And I, listen, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to come, but I, I, you won't believe how far I've I, a year ago, I would not have envisioned, I couldn't have fathomed myself being here and in this place. My wife drugged me, kicking and screaming in here. Some of you, that was you today. You're still here. And so, and I sat here for three or four weeks and months, and I just sat and I crossed my arms and whatever you said, <laughs> not, not doing that. 
I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. It's funny, but I'm not laughing. I'm not even going to laugh at that because I'm not. But then slowly over the course of time, God opened you up and you saw, you saw things differently and you took a step and it's changing the course of your life. Uh, listen, we, t- we say this all the time until you get sick of it at Journey. Take your next step. Circle the word your if you're taking notes because it's not somebody else's. It's yours. Like you have a different step to take than your wife does or your sister or your kid or your neighbor or the person down the row. If you've been a Christian for 50 years, you have a step to take. If you've been a Christian for five minutes, you have a step to take. If you don't know what yet, yet you believe about this, you have a step to take. So just take it. Just keep moving and God will meet you there. Here's two things that you could do in the next month. One is you could go to our crash course. If you haven't been to this yet, it's our first, uh, the first of the month, the first Sunday of every month. We have an hour-long lunch where we get to know you and you get to know us. And we tell you about what's happening here at Journey and how you can get involved, how you can find a group, how you can start to serve, how you can get connected. You, you learn all kinds of things about the church. We would love for you to come to that. The one in April next week is already full, but we're going to do another one in May, first uh, Sunday in May, right after Easter. And we're going to open it up. Typically, we kind of cap it, but we're going to do it here in the auditorium so it can be completely open. We'd love for you uh, to come to that and get to know about your next step here at the church. Also, uh, we've, we've got baptism coming up. Dozens and dozens of you have made a commitment to follow Jesus in the last couple of months. And Jesus would ask you as a first step of obedience to, to be involved in baptism. And we do baptisms right out here in the foyer, and it's just a, a beautiful public picture of what has happened to you. Not what you're going to do for God, but what God has done for you. And it's a picture of leaving an old life behind, going under the water, coming up a new person. It's a picture of a death and a burial and a resurrection. It's a picture of God washing away your sins. And we always have a big celebration out in the foyer. We'll do it immediately after this service, the 1130 service, uh, the week after Easter. Don't you think that'll be a good time to do it? Uh, so many people need to take that next step, and maybe you do too. If you've never been to one before at Journey, it's always a party. I mean, it's not donut wall party, but it's, it's a party, all right? So uh, how many of you enjoyed a donut, by the way, this morning? I have had 37. So uh, a little wired up. Here's another, uh, here's another big idea for us here at Journey. We just don't want to forget is that we are family we're family. Church is not an organization you join. It's a family you belong to. And some of you have found some of your closest friends, brothers and sisters in this place. That we, we come together under this banner that God is our father and you are my brother and my sister. And we take care of one another. All of us, every single one of us comes from dysfunctional families. And God brings us together under this banner of following Jesus. All different kinds of people uh, for, for his glory. Look at this verse in Ephesians 2.19. I love it. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Man, that's a beautiful picture. Why? Because we can't live the way of Jesus alone. We can't. We need each other. You can worship God on your own. You could go up to the mountains, be all by yourself fly fishing and worship God, but you can't live the way that Jesus wants you to live by yourself. We need each other. Here's another big idea for us today. It really is the linchpin of following Jesus, and it's this. It's not about me. Bedrock heartbeat of journey. It's not about me. Bedrock of what it means to follow Jesus. It's not about me. In fact, it's so important. Why don't we say it together? Let's just say it loud and proud. Ready? It's not about me. Come on, one more time. Ready? It's not about me. This is the most important spiritual step that you will take. It is the link to all other spiritual growth steps. In fact, it's not a one-time thing. It's an everyday thing to keep reminding ourselves it's not It's not about me. Look at this verse, Mark 10, 45, just says this. For even the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life as a ransom for many. I've said this a hundred thousand times to us, church. You are never more like Jesus than when you're serving. So we fight against the what's in it for me mentality. Now you could do that in the drive through at Starbucks. You can do that in the mall and any other consumer environment you want to be in. But when we come to church, we fight against that. When we say, hey, we're a family, we fight against that. We stop saying, what's in it for me? And instead we say, how can I help? That's the shift from a consumerism, from a selfishness, from sin to, hey, how can I help? How can I lay my life down? How can I do what is necessary so that other people see God for who he really is. It's why sometimes I'll ask our church as your pastor to do things like, hey, what, could you tr maybe try the five? Could you go to a, a, an off time service and be a little bit inconvenienced? Why? Because there are hundreds of people in our community who are trying to find their way home, trying to find their way back to God. And if you have some flexibility in your schedule and you can go to one of those off peak services, it frees up seats for people who are trying to take their steps well, that's a little bit inconvenient. I, I know, but listen, just you have to know this, and I'll always tell you this. Jesus will continually inconvenience you. In fact, it's like his main purpose in your life because we don't change when we try to stay in the comfort zone and stay the same. He's always going to be trying to get you off center because when, in, in those moments is when we trust God the most and come to know him the most. In a couple of weeks, we've got Easter coming up. And we're going to have uh, services on Saturday. And we're going to have services on Sunday. We're going to have seven services. We're going to need people to help park and drive shuttles and check in kids and clean up and set up and tear down. All those kind of things. We need your help. And so maybe you'd say, hey, I, I don't normally do that, but I'm going to step into that. In fact, inside your bulletin is a little place where you can... Fill out a little form and say, hey, I'd like to help with this on this weekend. And somebody will plug you in because, listen, it's not about me. I got to stop saying what's in it for me. And I got to start saying, how can I help? Because that's when you grow the most. Listen, uh, this church is in, insanely dependent upon its serve team. Hundreds of people make this happen. And so if you didn't notice, if you're brand new and if you've never served before, we did fine without you this morning. We did. Honestly, I don't mean that like mean. Here's why I'm saying that is because it's not that we need you. It's that you need this. You, you will catapult your spirituality if you stop saying what's in it for me and start asking how can I help. And every person who serves here at this church would stand up and say, when I started really growing is when I got involved in serving other people. Here's another big idea before we close today is, is we're just getting started. From day one, when we started, we were just getting started. And 12, 13, 14 years later, we're just getting started. We believe that God has more for, for your life, your family, and for our church. Look at these verses, the last verses that Jesus gives his disciples before he sends to heaven in Matthew chapter 28. It's called the Great Commission or the Great Co-Mission, Mission Together. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey any, everything I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The very last thing that Jesus says to his followers is, hey, go into all the world. And tell people about what you've heard here, about life, about change, about God's forgiveness. Go everywhere and tell everyone. Why? Because we exist for those who aren't here yet. Do you know why? Because at one point in your life, you were a not here yet person. Right? And somebody along the way sacrificed and gave and invested and was intentional so you could be here. Right now, I want you to think about in your mind, who is the person or persons who made sure that you were here? It might be your mom and dad. It might be a grandma. It might be a neighbor or a friend. Uh, for me, it was an 18-year-old girl, 16-year-old girl in high school in English, sitting beside me in English, who said, why don't you go to church with me? That, that was the person who made sure, because I wasn't there yet. There's a whole lot of not yet here people. You know, we're the only organization in the world that exists for people who aren't its members. 
Because we keep thinking about the people who are around us. Everybody you bump into. Why? Because people are hurting. People need hope. Tuesday, I stood on a stage in front of a thousand people, 800 teenagers, officiating the funeral for a 16 year old girl who took her life. And I was wrecked because I have a 16 year old baby girl. A couple days later, a young man from Valor takes his life. A couple days later, a young lady from Cherry Creek High School takes her life. This must stop. And the only way it stops is for the hope of God to rise up in our community. The purpose of God. I just look, I did my best to honor the family and look at every teenager in that room and say, God loves you and has a purpose and a plan for your life. It is not too late. People in our community are hurting. We live in the eighth wealthiest county in the United States. And that veneer protects us from a lot, but you have no idea who you're sitting beside and what they're carrying today. People are hurting, and that's why we won't stop. That's why we're just getting started. Also because everyone spends eternity somewhere. I'm white-hot passionate about this. Every single person who's breathing in and out on the planet today, will, their life will one day end, and it will either be forever with God or away from God. And we cannot lose sight of that. And as long as there is one person in our community who needs to know the hope and the love of Jesus, we as a church will be focused on that. And we're door holders. That's all we are. We have been into the temple. We have seen the presence of God. And now we have come out and then we just hold the door open. And go, you, you got to see what's in here. You cannot believe what God wants to do for you. We, we are simply servants who hold open the door. We are not people who have it all together. We are not the people who look down on others and say, if you would just only live like me. No, no, no. We are servants who hold the door open and say, listen, you just got to get into the presence of God and see what that's like. Because we're just getting started. I want to show you just a brief video to close the service. It's only about three minutes today. Um, it, to set this up, this is me talking to our church a little over three years ago, just trying to cast vision just trying to paint a picture of where we might go together as a church. And I, I wanted to bring it out today, three years later, to play it. Because one, uh, as you're watching, you'll see some of the things that have happened. I want you to keep this in mind. When this video played, this place was, it was an empty field. And there are things in this video that have not yet happened as well. So just go ahead and let's play this. Take a look. I love this place. <laughs> Since the very beginning, Journey has been about next steps. We've been about reaching people, people who are far from God, people who have questions, people who are skeptical, people who say, hey, I just need one more chance. We've been about meeting people right where they are and helping them take their next steps with Jesus. And now it's time for us as a church to take a massive step together. It's time for us to build. Nine and a half years ago, our church moved out of uh, a hotel ballroom and into this facility. A small band of faithful followers came together and they painted and they built stages and they set up audio and visual and they created kids spaces so that we could have church. And now it's time for us to move again. So we've come to a place where we have to move out of this facility. It's begun to limit our growth and our capacity and, and reaching our mission for Jesus. I mean, let's face it, when you pull up in the parking lot, this is an ugly green building. When you walk in the door, it feels like a concourse and an airport. We need a larger auditorium. Those of you who have kids, you know how difficult it is to check in and check out your children. And as amazing of a job as our kids ministry and student ministry team does in this facility, imagine what they could do in a facility that was actually designed for a church. And so by God's providence, he's provided for us. Uh, last February, we purchased 12 acres of land on I-25 in the fastest growing area of our city. It's exploding with growth and new people right on the interstate. And we purchased that, that property with cash from the giving of the people who were already here, who were preparing to move. So now as we step forward, we're going to build a new facility there in that location.
location. This facility will have a 350 seat auditorium. It'll allow us to double our capacity on a weekend. We'll be able to reach over a thousand people each weekend with this new facility and new layout. We're gonna be able to double the size of the kids ministry impact and student ministry impact that we have. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love coming in and checking your kids into these new environments. You're gonna love inviting your new friends to this facility. We're gonna build a counseling and recovery center in this new facility that'll enable us to help people as they come to Christ, begin to make steps in their growth, to, to deal with the baggage of their past. It'll be a facility where we can do mission opportunities week in and week out to launch out into our city and our community and our world and serve it. It'll be a hub of activity that allows us to continue to grow in our relationship with Christ, but expand our influence, ultimately to fulfill our mission of being a church planting movement, of seeing locations and churches being launched every single year to reach more and more people in the state of Colorado for Christ. So would you join Jesus in building his church? Would you pray like you never have before? Would you step in and ask God, how am I supposed to be a part of this next phase of Journey Church, and I pray God would lead you to your next step. Let's build Journey. So I show you that video to uh, one, just <laughs> when I filmed that. Uh, I gave every ounce of vision and faith and hope that I could possibly muster. And then I went and sat in one of our classrooms in a chair and thought, oh, no, I don't know if that could ever happen. Me, you know, great man of faith that <laughs> gets me your pastor like it. Just left and thought, I don't that that's so far beyond what I can see right now. And maybe you've carried something in today that you go, I don't know how that's going to turn out. I don't know what's going to happen in there. But we showed that little video and we asked and people said, here, I'm in. I want to put my brick on the foundation there and I'm going to lay my brick. Here's what I can do. Here's what I could do. Here, here's what my family, we're, we're going to help. We're going to help with that. We're going to lay down our foundation right here. Okay, here's, here's what we have. And whether you gave... $10 or $10,000, you said, here's what I have. And just, just kept building. And in that moment, you know, we just forecasted. We just said, listen, uh, if we build this, I, we could double the size of the number of people who are coming. Well, today, about four times the size of the people that were coming will be here. On big weekends, five, six, seven times the number of people who were gathered there will gather here. And People gave what they had to, to lay a foundation. And what we thought was our, our ceiling has become our floor. Like what we, as much as we could reach for with all the faith that we had, God, please, has now become the foundation to just get started. And now you just have to see it, it's my turn now. It's, it's what, what has God asked me to do in this moment? Because just like as a parent, you may be saying, look, I give every single thing that I have to, to reach for this ceiling in the hopes that one day my children will stand on our shoulders. We're just getting started because there are so many people who need the hope and the love the forgiveness and the purpose of God in their lives. We're so grateful for God's faithfulness to us, but it's just the beginning. Why don't we all stand together? And I want us to sing with everything we've got, just this chorus of grateful thanks to God of how great he is in our lives. Thank you for being such a faithful and generous church. Let's pray and then we'll sing, God, thank you. Thank you so much for investing in us. For It's not crazy that we believe in you. It's crazy that you believe in us. God, thanks for letting us be a part of this and for all the sacrifices that have been made in the last decade. Grateful to you, God. Greater you are God and King, and we worship you now together. In Jesus' name, amen. 